Regular languages are closed under the regular operations. The regular operations are concatenation and union and the closure operation, which is often called star. In this video, we're going to show that if you take these operations and apply them to regular languages, the resulting language is also regular. First, let's look at the union operation. The class of regular languages is closed under the union operation. Let me just talk a moment what it, about what it means to be closed. This idea of closure is that uh, if you take some elements from a set and perform an operation on them, the result of the operation is also in that set. For example, if you take the integers and you consider the operation of addition, well, addition is closed. Um, or the integers, we say the integers are closed under addition because if you add any two integers, the result is also an integer. On the other hand, the set of integers is not closed under division because if you take uh, some integers and divide them, the result is no longer an integer. Okay, so we're going to uh, prove that if you take two regular languages and union them, um, the result is also a regular language. So our proof is to assume that we have two regular languages and then to show that their union is regular. And if A1 and A2 are regular languages, then we know that there is some non-deterministic finite automaton that recognizes each one of those. So let's assume that there's a non-deterministic finite state machine N1 that recognizes A1 and that N2 recognizes A2. What we're going to do is combine N1 and N2, these two machines, and build a new machine and we're going to call it N and it will recognize the union of A1 and A2. So our proof is a proof by construction. Here we have shown schematically our two machines N1 and N2. And I'm not showing the details, but certainly there's a starting state for each one of these. And for each one, uh, there may be some final states, uh, several final states. So we're going to construct a new machine, which we're going to call N, to recognize the union. And we'll just create a new starting state for it. And we'll add transitions. Um, and we'll make these epsilon transitions. This Our new machine is also non-deterministic. So we make, uh, you get the idea, uh, that arrow goes to the, these are no longer starting states. This is now our starting state. So next, let's look at uh, how this looks formally. To be more precise, let's show the same construction, only let's show it more uh, formally with uh, symbols. So we have our two machines to recognize the two uh, different languages, L1, and, or we call them A1 and A2. Um, so they each have their own specification. And we're going to construct a new machine in to recognize the union. And notice it will have a new starting state that's different than the starting states from of the initial machines, and a new transition function, and a new set of final states. And here is how, how we construct that machine. First of all, its set of states will be combined with will be a combination or a union of the states in both N1 and N2 along with a new starting state Q0 just as I showed on the picture. Uh, the final states, uh, if it was a final state in either N1 or N2 then it will be a final state in the, in the new machine. And finally the transition function um, is given as follows. If there's a transition in machine N1 in other words, for any state in uh, N1, if there's a transition from that state to uh, uh, some other state on some alphabetic symbol, then we'll uh, keep that edge. And likewise, if there's an edge in Q2, we'll keep that edge. And um, finally, if um, uh, we are starting, if our Q here is Q0, in other words, in the case where we are coming from our initial state, uh, we'll go to either state Q1 or Q2, the, starting, the former starting states of the two 
uh, machines in one and in two. And this will be an epsilon edge. And um, finally, uh, for all other possible, uh, uh, there are no other edges coming out of Q0 um, that are not uh, labeled with epsilon. So that's how we build uh, our new machine using uh, formal symbolism. Next, we're going to look at the fact that regular languages are closed under concatenation. If we take two languages, such as A1 and A2, and we concatenate them, uh, which we symbolize with a little circle here, then uh, we get something that is also a regular language. And remember what the concatenation operation between two languages does. Uh, it's, it produces a new set of strings. In other words, it produces a new language. And what do those elements uh, in that language look like? Well, they each have a first piece and a second piece. So every string W in the result of concatenating A1 with A2 is a string. And that string has a first part, X, that comes from A1, and then a second part, Y, that comes from A2. Our proof uh, is essentially the same. We're going to use the same approach. Since A1 and A2 are regular languages, we assume that we have non-deterministic machines in one and in two to recognize them. And we're going to show in the proof how to construct a machine to recognize the concatenation of A1 and A2. And let's start with a graphical uh, description of what in looks like. Okay, here I've shown schematically the machines for in one and in two with their uh, two initial states, Q1 and Q2. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use, we're going to build our machine in to represent or to recognize the um, concatenation and the initial state for n will just be the initial state for n1. So maybe I'll emphasize that with making a second red arrow here. This is our new initial state. The initial state from n2 will no longer be initial. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add epsilon edges from each of our final states in n1 to the initial state of n2. And these are going to be epsilon edges, so I'm going to label them with epsilons here. Um, now, for the final states in this machine, uh, these here will remain our final states. So the final states for machine N2 are final states in the resulting machine. Um, the final states of N1 will no longer be final, so that's what I've written here. Let me just write it more clearly. No longer final states. Okay, so these are no longer final states, uh, whereas these will be the final states of the new machine. Okay, next look at, let's look at this uh, formally with symbols. Okay, so again, we assume that we've got two machines, N1 and N2, with their sets of states, their transition functions, their starting states, and their sets of final states. And we construct a new machine, N. And for N, the set of states will just be the states that are in N1 and that are in N2. Uh, we won't add any new states. Our initial state of the new, mas new machine, Q0, will be just be the same as the state that was the initial state for machine N1. And our final states in the new machine, F, will just be the set of final states that were the final states of machine N2, N2. Now, finally, we have to specify our transition function, and we need to have it fully specified for all states. In other words, what happens on all states and all um, possible uh, symbols from our alphabet? Well, we have these cases. If Q is an element of Q1, then we just go where we would have gone. Um, in, um, if uh, element if Q is an element of, of machine N2, then we just use the transitions that were in machine N2. Um, and if 
Then we need to add edges from the final states of machine F1, and these are epsilon edges, and they go to um, wherever they would have gone to, okay, uh, plus they go to the initial state. So going back to the picture, I didn't so show any edges going out of the final states back to some other states, but of course we could have those even though I didn't show them. So formally we're saying that we preserve those edges as well as add a new edge to the initial state of machine N2. And um, those are epsilon edges. For all other epsilon edges, uh, we just use whatever edge was in uh, machine N1. So this is the formal specification for the transition function that recognizes the concatenation of languages A1 and A2. Finally, let's look at the regular operation called star. And if we apply, apply star to a language that is regular, we get a language that's also regular. And the proof is the same idea. I'll sh sketch it out uh, informally with the, the, with a picture of the non-deterministic machine. Um, uh, I won't bother with uh, doing the formal uh, construction. Uh, I'll leave it to you to do that. But let's start with a machine that recognizes the language in A1 and now apply the star operation to it. Well, we construct a new machine and it looks like this. Um, first of all, uh, this is our initial machine and this, this is our, uh, our initial state and these are our final states. But with star, we can have um, zero. We can have several occurrences. So even after we've seen one occurrence of the string, we can come back to the initial state and see um, more occurrences of strings. Okay. So we just add edges from the final states to the initial state. Now we can have zero or more occurrences. So what we need to do is we need to add a new state here. Okay. And this is our new initial state, and this is an epsilon edge. Oh, these are epsilon edges too, I should uh, mention that. And we can also have zero occurrences of the string, so we make this a final state. So we start in a final state, which means we accept the uh, empty string as well as one or more occurrences of strings in the language. So the class of regular languages is closed under the regular operations. The regular operations are concatenation, union, and star.